for distributed deployment with multiple worker groups, there are many use cases where Cribble recommends that a worker group sends data to another worker group. For example, in this slide, we can see three worker groups that use TCP JSON streaming to transfer data from two data centers, AWS, US West data center, to the US East data center. And this type of an architecture can lead to multiple benefits. First, uh, compression. When Logstream use the TCP JSON streaming, we can compress the data on the wire which can lead to a really high volume data transfer, as well as saving in data egress, which refer to saving on data leaving a cloud provider like AWS. A third is the secure communication. When we use the TCP JSON, we can use um, tokens and certificates to make sure that the data get transferred across the wire securely. And finally, from a business point of view, if you want to collect data from multiple departments or data centers and present the business with a consolidated view for the entire organization, uh, this could be a great architecture. For example, uh, if you have a security use case, you can have the ability to roll up the most important notable events and alerts for the entire organization. With this background, let's move into the demo and see how we can enable this architecture. In this demo, I created two worker groups. One I called the US West data center, and the other one is the US East data center. The US West data center is where we're going to send the data from and the US East is where the data is going to be sent to and from the US East we're going to send the data to the uh, analytic tools in this case I chose Splunk for the demo and so let's go into the US East data center first and let's going to data and sources and select the TCP JSON as the source on the east. Looking at the configuration, we can see a few things. One, when we enable TCP JSON, we need to specify the address. In this case, uh, the default address is good for the demo. It's just the uh, accept TCP JSON traffic from all um, addresses. That is good enough. The port yeah, is exactly what we're going to have to match on the US West when we send. And finally, to enable security, I uh, clicked on the generate token, auth token, which allows us to prohibit any other traffic other than the um, a source that really match this same shared secret. And so once we have this particular token, I then, I will show it to you in a minute, I copy this token into the US West. A additional settings that you can see here that if you want to have a more secure connection, you can have uh, private keys and certificates. And there is quite a lot of options here to make sure that the communication between the two sites is secure. And there is um, also how many connections are we going to allow and whitelisting and proxies, are all kind of options that we can enable uh, from a source point of view on the on the east side in this, in, in this particular case. Uh, once the data arrives on the east data center, we're going to send it 
through a route. Uh, in this particular case, I am go I decided to use masking and make sure that by the time Splunk gets the data, uh, the data will be masked. In other words, it will be either encrypted or masked and so that social security numbers, credit cards, are not in the clear by the time they arrive at my Splunk instance. With that, let's go to the US West data center. And for this demo, I'm just going to use Logstream data gen. I'm just generating a bunch of business events and when we clicked on live, we can see that this is just a set of key value pairs that have been generated. So that's the data source itself that we for, that I'm using for the demo. From there, I'm going to go to the route and I have a route that takes that key value pair and transfer that to a JSON. We can see that the data comes in as a key value pair, and I turn it into a JSON object before I send it downstream to the TCP JSON connection. And just uh, looking at the before this pipeline and after this pipeline, we can see that the output for that is a JSON object that we are sending to the destination. So at this point, let's move into the destination on the West. And for this demo, I set up a TCP JSON that is going to send the data to the IP address of the remote worker group. Um, also, you can see the same port that uh, I set up earlier on the east so that the two have to match. The third thing that has to match is, as we specified from a security point of view, is the auth token. We're going to send the auth token and it has to match with what the uh, east data center is expecting. The fourth item our compression, as we mentioned, it's really important to be efficient when we transfer massive amount of data between worker groups. So using a compression is a, a best practice, as well as throttling. I set it up here to 42 megabytes. There is quite, uh, as you expect, there is quite a few other options that you can enable, like uh, as the set of the recipient, also from a client, from a person that's sending the data, you can add the uh, certificates and, and all the other security elements. Uh, we can set up uh, how long should we wait for a connection be before we drop it. And um, there is a few other um, more of along the lines of manipulation of the data on the pipeline. So that is um, what we have from the data going out from the west to the east. And we can, as you expect, we can validate that the data is that we are sending is in a JSON format, which it is. And so once we connect all of these, and once we, once we start this entire end-to-end, -end, we have US West starting with data source, which is a key value pair goes through the routes. The route then transfers the data from key value to a JSON. And from there, it sends the data to the TCP JSON option as a destination. And the data from there goes to the east. And from the east, it goes to the TCP JSON recipient. From there, it goes into a, a route that 
mask the data, and from there, it will go to the local Splunk that allows us to then display the data uh, and analyze the data and validate that our credit card that came from the West is now uh, masked and uh, also the Social Security and the ESN, all of those have been gone from the West to the East and in a very efficient way. And with that, let's wrap up. Uh, this is just the, the slide that highlights the benefit of this architecture. And enjoy.